guys, and welcome back to another video right here on TetraBit Gaming. Super Mario Maker 2, the game where anyone can make a Mario level, and I mean anyone, with near limitless possibilities, just got more near limitless with the latest and last major updates to the game. This update added a lot, new items, the closest we'll ever get to a Super Mario Bros. 2 mode, and even a pretty robust World Maker mode that fans have been asking for for a very long time. Since this is the last major update, and I hope I'm wrong, but I doubt we'll be seeing any new items added to the game down the road. As such, I wanted to finally rank all of Super Mario Maker 2's items from worst to best. Of course, each item's usefulness, if you will, is situational to the level it's in, but here I'll be ranking these items based on their overall assistance they offer to the player, in a general sense, compared to each other. So with that said, let's jump to it. Kicking things off is basically an anti-power-up. It's quite simple, touch this mushroom and it counts as getting hit by an enemy. The Rotten Mushroom is essentially a modern successor to the Poison Mushroom from Super Mario The Lost Levels. The Rotten Mushroom's improvement, if you want to call it that, over the Poison Mushroom is that it will actually follow you around and jump to try and reach you. It always really creeps me out. Doesn't help you at all, in fact the opposite, easily the worst item. Coins, what can you say about them? Some love them, others hate them. Either way, in general, they don't really aid the player other than making them, I guess, richer, and they lead up to a 1-up if 100 are collected. Individually though, not that great. I really do like the pink coins, as they are often implemented to encourage level exploration, make it necessary to complete certain segments, and more. That said, as an actual item itself, it doesn't really do much more than just lead up to the player getting a key, which, spoiler alert, isn't on this list since it isn't actually classified as an item, but rather a gizmo. But yeah, they don't really do anything for the player in terms of an effect, other than increase the coin counter by one, so I guess they're a bit better than regular coins. Coins again, but this time in denominations of 10, 30, or 50. Now while these are often used as incentives to find hidden or hard to reach areas, again they don't really aid the player. I look at these as basically 10, 30, or 50% of a 1-up. The classic Super Mushroom has been around in Mario games ever since the original Super Mario Bros., and I can't imagine a 2D Mario platformer without it. It's really straightforward, the mushroom makes you bigger and allows you to take an extra hit before you lose a life. Additionally, when supersized, you can also break brick blocks. Wait, break brick blocks above you, and in the Super Mario World mode, you can also spin to break blocks below you as well. Just like the Super Mushrooms, the 1 Up Mushrooms have also been around for a very long time in Mario games. Of course, the 1 Up Mushrooms give you an extra life, which is great, an extra shot at beating a level or a world. But if you're like me and 90% of your time is just playing other people's levels in Course World, extra lives don't really mean anything. The 1-ups only really matter in World Maker Worlds or the Endless Challenge Runs, so yeah, I guess this item's usefulness really does depend on which modes you play more. So personally, I hardly ever need extra lives, and as such, I find the 1-ups and coins to get extra lives, like I mentioned before, not all that useful. I certainly welcome the inclusion of an item from the Super Mario Land games, though I do wish it was basically anything but the Super Ball Flower. Acting the same as it does in Super Mario Land 1, it just lets you throw a Super Ball down, which then starts ricocheting off anything. The biggest follies with this power-up are A, you can only have one Super Ball on screen at a time, so if you miss your target, you're stuck without an attack till it goes off screen. And B, the horizontal range is pretty suboptimal. Your target has to be either right in front of you or else you'll have to plan around having to aim the ball's ricochet. If I recall correctly, I think this power-up actually made it to my top 10 worst power-ups ever list forever ago. Didn't like it then, still don't like it now. The first freshly added item here on this list is the red POW box. It's a POW block that you can wear on your head. It's exactly what it sounds like. To use it, you do have to bonk something with your head, which is pretty limiting, and overall its range is somewhat short, I'd say. It definitely doesn't cover the entire screen like a regular POW block. I don't see too much usefulness for this item outside of breaking many blocks, or ones that may be out of range normally, and you only do get 3 hits with this item before you lose it, so it doesn't tend to last very long. To me, I think the red POW box only saving grace is that it can be stacked with another power-up. 
The Goomba Mask is another new addition from the latest update and is only found in the Super Mario 3D World style, which kinda makes sense as that's where the item originates. In short, the Goomba Mask just acts as a disguise, I guess a pretty convincing one as enemies will no longer target you. Like Boom Boom will just stand there and basically actively try to not hit you. That said, enemies can still hurt you, so I kind of view the Goomba Mask as essentially an enhanced Super Mushroom. It can again also stack with other power-ups, which is super nifty, so thumbs up for that. I usually try to avoid water levels the best that I can in games, but the newly added frog suit to the Super Mario Bros. 3 style certainly helps out with that here. With it, no longer is swimming as floaty, as you can now swim in straight directions and faster. Much faster. It honestly makes water levels tolerable. Also, the frog suit lets you run on water, kind of like the mini mushroom or Luigi in Super Mario 64 DS. The benefits kinda do stop as soon as you leave the water though. On land, you essentially become a fish out of water. Fair enough. Your movement is significantly impaired as you hop much slower to the point where it's actually detrimental, I find. Good underwater, bad on land. The Big Mushroom again made its return from the first Super Mario Maker with the same effect. This allows the player to grow to a large size, and you can now break certain blocks that you otherwise can't. The benefits kinda do stop there though, as you can still take damage as normal. And for whatever reason, Mario Maker 2 removed the cool effects on the enemies seen in the first Super Mario Maker. Come on Nintendo, you can't do mustached sledge bro dirty like that. Although the Super Mario Bros. 2 Mushroom is one of my favorite additions to Super Mario Maker 2 now, I have to admit its general benefits are kind of lacking. This mushroom lets you stand on certain enemies as well as grab and throw them just like you could in Super Mario Bros. 2. And as a bonus, the Super Jump also makes a return. Now sure, levels can be made around these moves to require them and feature them, but in general, I find riding enemies and throwing them nowhere near as effective as some other power-ups with projectiles. The Boomerang power-up makes its 2D debut here and it works just about the same as its 3D counterparts. You throw a boomerang, it can hit stuff, it can not hit stuff, and then it comes right back. Simple and reliable. The Cannon Box works very similar to the Boomerang Flower in the sense that it just shoots out a horizontal projectile. They even have a similar range. The Cannon Box can also be charged up and again stacked with other power-ups giving it a bit of an edge. Despite being on the front cover of both games, Builder Mario only makes an appearance as a proper power-up in Mario Maker 2. Although the Super Hammer lets you break through certain brick blocks, the range of the hammer attack is really short. Though it may not be great in terms of offense, where this power-up really shines is its ability to spawn up to 5 builder boxes. I think this ability is pretty versatile as you can build up a tower to cross certain obstacles or block enemies, or you can even use them to traverse lava. Just like the Super Mario Bros. 2 Mushroom, it is pretty situational though, and in a general sense, there are just definitely more useful items. Invincibility is undeniably a great power-up. You can plow through enemies, basically nothing hurts you, and you flash all sorts of colors. What's not to like? Well, unfortunately, the invincibility effect is only temporary, so while it is amazing, it's rather short-lived. As soon as the time runs out, the item is rendered useless, and this alone makes it kind of a middle-of-the-road item for me. The Bullet Bill Mask is a brand new item in Mario games in general. It lets you channel your inner Bullet Bill and fly through the air quite quickly. This can be very useful to clear long jumps with ease, and I think it's great that it travels in a straight line. It would almost be a top tier aerial power up, except for one big flaw. Unlike most other power ups that give you flight, as soon as you crash into anything, even a wall, you lose the item, which I think is a pretty big downside. On the upside though, being a mask, again this item can be stacked with other power ups, which is of course, always great. Alright, so the Karibo Shoe or Stiletto is good for three reasons. Number one, not only does it give you an extra hit that you can take, it also lets you walk all over otherwise deadly terrain and enemies like spikes and munchers. Number two, you can also use it to essentially double jump in order to reach higher or further away platforms. And finally, number three, you can jump and then do a sort of ground pound to break all the blocks below you, which is super useful. Coupled with some wings, and this is an absolutely amazing item to ride in. Who wouldn't want to hop around in a smelly boot? 
Another classic mainstay, the Fire Flower is one of my favorite power-ups. Not only do you get an extra two hits before losing a life now, but you can also shoot out fireballs. These have further range than the boomerang or cannon box, and they can be fired out in fairly rapid succession to make waste of most enemies in your path. Being the flagship item from New Super Mario Bros. U, I always found it odd that the Super Acorn wasn't added in Super Mario Maker 1. I guess they just saw that the propeller mushroom is just better in almost every way, making this item kind of redundant. Well, that's also the case here. I'm glad this was added, don't get me wrong, and it's nice to get that extra boost mid-air, be able to flap down slower and cling onto walls, but there are just other items that do it better. Mario's Fursona is back, and so are all of the cat-like abilities from Super Mario 3D World. It's quite a versatile item for maneuvering around a stage. You can claw at enemies, do a dive attack, and most importantly, climb up essentially any wall, which can be super useful. Like I mentioned earlier, the Propeller Mushroom is just overall a better version of the Super Acorn. You get a higher mid-air boost, and you can still float down, and you even get to do a spinning drill attack. You basically only miss out on clinging onto walls, but that trade-off is one I'm more than willing to make. The Propeller Box was also recently added to Mario Maker 2, and it basically just adds the Propeller Mushroom abilities to the Super Mario 3D World style, and then some. It is better though, as you can boost up to three times mid-air, and unlike the POW block, the three uses reset every time you touch the ground. So in theory, you can keep using this box as long as you don't get hit. And as with the other boxes and masks, this item can also be stacked on top of other power-ups. Ah, the P Balloon I honestly had a tough time ranking. At first I put this item close to the worst on this list, and that's because the few courses that I did play with it were just spike mazes where you had to traverse them as the balloon. In situations like that, yeah, they aren't super useful, but taking a step back, in general, this is probably the absolute best aerial power-up. Although I personally find the controls kind of frustrating, you can fly in any direction very fast, in that sense, making it better than the Bullet Bill Mask, Cape Feather, you name it. So as long as you avoid spikes and enemies, this power-up is probably the best way to traverse an open stage quickly. That said, with this item you are pretty vulnerable, you can't defeat any enemies, and you are limited since you don't have the option of walking on the ground normally if you need to. This tax evading fella comes with most of the benefits of the Goomba Shoe and then some. You can also use Yoshi to essentially be able to take infinite hits, but he does run around when you do get hit, which makes it a bit harder to jump back on. But on the plus side, Yoshi also has a long tongue, which can be used to lick up enemies, grab items through walls, and some objects or items that can be spat out as large fireballs. And of course, you can pull the classic move to ditch Yoshi mid-jump to get some extra air. The red Yoshi is the same as the regular Yoshi, except instead of licking stuff up, you can just breathe unlimited fireballs, which generally I think is a bit more useful. The Super Leaf may not grant mid-air boosts like the Propeller Mushroom or Box or the Acorn Mushroom, but I find as Raccoon Mario you can fly up to much higher areas. Additionally, you can also float down slower and do a tailspin to both hurt enemies and break brick blocks horizontally. This has always been one of my favorite items in 2D Mario games, and one that I always thought was super useful in so many levels. Although personally not my favorite, because I suck at controlling it, Super Mario World's Cape Feather has all the benefits of the Super Leaf, but it lets you fly up much faster, and it lets you fly horizontally much further, and also again faster. And by crashing into the ground below, you can also cause a small POW block-like tremor, which can damage enemies, cause items to fall, and you're also invincible. Another very versatile item that can find use in most scenarios. There's something ironic about the best Super Mario Maker 2 item not even being a Mario item. Yep, the item that I think is absolutely the best, most versatile, and most useful in Super Mario Maker 2 is the Master Sword. Introduced in the game's very first major update, the Master Sword will transform Mario into Legend of Zelda's Link. And no, this is not a mere sprite swap like the amiibo costume from Super Mario Maker 1, as now you are given a loadout of new moves. This is basically the Swiss Army Knife of power-ups. You can use Link's sword, throw unlimited bombs to break blocks, run super fast using the Pegasus boots, block attacks, and use the bow and arrow to hit enemies or items from afar. 
Although the Master Sword may not give you an aerial movement advantage, the sheer utility this new moveset offers is, quite frankly, unrivaled. As Link, it feels like you can overcome any scenario and basically cut through any obstacle that may come your way. And there you have it, my ranking of every Super Mario Maker 2 item from worst to best, and I hope you enjoyed. What are some of your favorite and least favorite items in the game? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out some more of my other ranking videos by clicking or tapping on the card right here. And be sure to subscribe here for future videos, swing by my other social media things which are all linked down in the description below, and if you want to support the channel, check out my merch over at tetrabitgaming.com, or consider becoming the latest member of the Bit Club to get some nifty extra channel perks. Click on the join button below for more information. Anyways guys, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.